the playoffs have been like a very cruel monster to some teams, especially the Utah Jazz. And you look at the um, Pelicans, they're both down 3-1. The Rockets and the Warriors are up. And already, people are basically disrespecting the Jazz <laughs> and the Pelicans and talking about the next series. Hey, this is what we wanted to see. Now, I don't want to disrespect both teams. I don't want to be like, you know, so disrespectful. But hey, so everybody else is doing it, I'm going to do it too. Let's get it. Warriors, Houston. I mean, Warriors, Rockets. This is going to be a great series. People have it going seven game series. I can see it going six or seven. I, I still have it in favor of the Warriors. The Rockets are playing great ball, but one thing that I've noticed with them is they lose a lot of poise and they make a lot of mistakes down stretches of games. Um, they, they push the pace so much that it gets to the point where even their role players feel like they can push the pace and that's where they're gonna get in trouble with the Warriors. Because you can't have guys like Luke Mom, Butte, and Clint Capella thinking they're Magic Johnson dribbling the ball down and all this other stuff. Because this is what's going to happen. This is what the Pelicans were doing to the Golden State Warriors. They were staying off the ball, you know, doubling Curry and doubling um, Kevin Durant and saying, Draymond, you shoot that ball. Iggy, shoot that ball. That's what the Warriors are going to do to the Houston Rockets. They're going to double off. They're going to double Harden. They're going to double CP. And they're going to say... Clint Capella beat us with a mid-range jump shot. They're going to say, um, Luke Mambute, keep shooting them threes. Let's let's see if you can make, get 30 points on your own. They're going to say, um, what's, the, what's that guy's name? He's he's like a, a, a heavy defender or whatever the case is. He's the brolic dude. You guys know what I'm talking about. They're going to say, you, we need you to hit more threes. That's what they're going to do. They're going to force the others to beat them. They're not going to let James Harden go off. They're not going to let CP3 go off. And one thing that I've noticed about the Rockets team is this. If James Harden is not going off or CP3 is not going off, they're not going to win that game. They're not going to win that game. As opposed to the Warriors, if, if Curry if Curry's not going, we saw that in game three, I mean, or yeah, game four. Curry wasn't had it, didn't have it going. KD had 38. Klay Thompson had like quiet 20. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes Dr Draymond had 9, 9, and 9. Like, I mean, he's these these things are the things that I'm talking about with the Warriors. Like, they don't have to play extremely well to beat teams. But for Houston, James Harden and CP3 have to be on point at all times. Like, CP3 in this series cannot have games where he scores 8 points or 12 points, stuff like that. Like, Clint Capella is going to have to average a double double. He's going to have to average 17 and 15 a game for them to win this series. Point blank, period. Cause that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna put them high pick and roll, double off the high pick and roll, and they're gonna be like, okay, Clint Capella, you make the right decision. Clint Capella doesn't throw lobs, does he? No. Clint Capella is not like a high assist guy, is he? No. Um, these are the things that are gonna happen, and Dan Tony's gonna have to adjust to it. But that's gonna be the key to it. Because if you look, Houston has played a bunch of teams that can't score. Pel um, the Utah Jazz, they're not explosive scores they had the game two win where they scored a lot but that was houston's folly i mean you look at against the uh minnesota timberwolves timberwolves couldn't score a great deal you're looking up you're, they're playing a team that not only could score just as if not just as much of them or if not better that can defend better than they can it, and we'll put them in positions where all of that pick and roll stuff they're gonna double hard enough that pick and roll and trap them and they might even trap them at at half court or they might even try to full court press them sometimes and that's going to take time off the clock that's going to make the pace slower and that's going to kind of put a monkey wrench in their game so that's something that houston has to, has to take account of for now are they is james harden going to have a 40 point game 50 point game yes yes i so foresee it stuff like that is it going to be a, a great series yes but i think after a while golden state is going to kind of figure something out with them because they this is the problem that people don't understand They've seen a 1-2 tandem before. They've seen Kyrie and LeBron before. And to me, if I want to look at two duos, is James Harden and uh, CP3 a more potent duo? Or is Kyrie and LeBron more potent duo? Now, mind you, James Harden and, and um, CP3 have a better team around them. But if that's... And I, actually, that's up for debate. Because if, if Kyrie was still with LeBron and Kevin Love, they would be favorites to come out of the East. And if they played the Rockets, they would, to me, they would be favorites to beat the Rockets. So, but to me, they've seen this before. Two guys that can handle, two guys that can score at a high clip. 
and they they were able to beat them in five. So what would not make you think that they could beat this Houston Rockets team? That's my question to you. Answer in the comments below.